So in the last video we have established that um, you cannot uh, rely on uh, Ansys Fluent to do the job for you to create a, a suitable mesh for your simulation. So you as an engineer need to have a look at uh, how to, you can refine it so that it uh, provides you the accurate uh, solution for your, for your problem. So now is the question, of course, uh, how can you make sure that this is actually accurate? And this is being done with a mesh refinement study. So how do we do that? Well, if you we go back to our simulation over here, we start out with a very coarse mesh. So we set out uh, our uh, mesh size here at 0 0.5 meters. We regenerate our mesh. That's done. We update it. We need to update it here as well in the Fluent server. All right, done already. We need to reinitialize and run the calculation. Okay. Okay, then we can have a look at the contours. And I'm going to have a look here at the pressure contours and display that. All right, so um, if you can see, you have a higher pressure here before the bend and a lower pressure behind the bend. So with that, uh, uh, in that region over here, you're going to lose some pressure. This is a pressure drop. And uh, there's a lot of empirical data available on measuring how the the, the pressure drop in bends and other installations like this. So we can now validate, or we can now check our uh, solution uh, versus this, these empirical data. So if I right click on this one, I get the pressure in this cell, and I get a right click on the other side, here behind this band, I get the pressure in the cell over there, and you can see that the pressure is dropping. So I can record now these data and then calculate the pressure drop from that. So I've done that here in an Excel sheet. So I'm um, for the this is the, the, the first row of my uh, my table over here. So I have um, the number of elements and the mesh size. So I'm choosing choosing uh, 0 0.5 meters as uh, my, my mesh size, my maximum mesh size, and that gave me 64 elements. Um, and then I have here the pressure upstream and downstream, and I can calculate the pressure drop. From empirical data, I know that my pressure drop is going to be like this, so I'm going to be at the moment an error of about 43%, so that's quite high. But that's not surprising because you have a very coarse mesh. So I have another column here, which is called Y+. Plus. So what is Y plus? Y plus is a measure for the size of the, uh, the, the cell on your wall. And that is going to give you a measure on um, how fine your boundary layer is going to be resolved. So Y plus um, is um, derived from, um, um, from, from some uh, studies on boundary layers, uh, trying to non-dimensionalize the uh, crosswise direction of a, of a boundary layer. Um, I'm not going to go too much into detail here, but just uh, remember this is essentially a measure for the uh, how well your boundary layers are resolved, and you can get that only once you have completed your, your simulation. Okay, so how do you get the Y plus? If you go here to uh, plot, XY plot, so you can click here on turbulence and here wall Y plus and x is a direction vector here. You click on walls because you would like to know everything on the, the y plus on the walls, and then you plot that. And then you can say, see a graph like this here. And the maximum y plus that we get here is about 130. So and that's what I put here in my graph here as well. All right, and uh, then I need to do a mesh refinement study. So I need to refine my mesh. I go back to my mesh, and now I reduce the maximum mesh size now to 0 0.2. Regenerate the mesh. I can have a look now at the statistics. Now I have 400 elements. Before I had 64, now it's 400. And then I need to update it again 
and rerun it and do everything again, I can then obtain the, the pressure drop and the wah wah plus and record that here in my table over there. So I've done that here already for several mesh refinements and uh, getting this kind of different kind of pressure drops. So now I can plot that. So the first thing that I can plot here is the pressure drop versus the mesh size. So um, uh, you see the mesh size increases here quite dramatically as soon as you start to become small. Um, your, your mesh becomes very, very large. So, and with that, um, you can see now how the pressure first changes quite rapidly when you're refining the mesh, but then at some point it stays more or less constant. And that tells you that, well, the mesh size here about, well, 20,000 to 40,000, uh, that should be now a sufficiently fine mesh to um, determine now the, um, the, the pressure drop in that, uh, in that, um, in that bend. You see, even the, the refined mesh, there's still quite a bit of difference from the empirical value. Here in the orange dashed line is the empirical value. So there's still 8 9% difference. But this is now not anymore an artifact of the, the mesh size. There are different things that uh, can contribute to that. One could be the turbulence model. Uh, one could be that it's, that we just calculate a 2D ge a geometry rather than a 3D dimensional one. And uh, there could be also that the empirical value is not the, the correct one. All right, so, but we know now the mesh size is now sufficiently fine for your, for your, for this kind of solution. All right, so the number of mesh points is uh, one measure. The other one would be the, the mesh cell size. So if you're making the mesh cell size smaller and smaller, um, then it should not change anymore as well. So we need to now look in the other direction over here. So we're starting here with the coarse mesh. The value is quite different. And then at some point you're making the mesh size smaller and smaller and smaller. And then you can finally get to a point where the mesh size or the values don't change that much anymore. Okay, now when you're refining the mesh, there's several ways to do that. The way that I've done here is essentially the, the dump way where you're refining the mesh everywhere. But that's not always a good solution in particular in three dimensions, because you would like to refine the mesh close to your body. And um, you don't really need to con refine the mesh uh, very far away from your body because there's not much going on there. The gradients are not very large, but the boundary layer is going to be important and that's why you need to refine the mesh. So and that's where the Y plus comes in, where the Y plus is actually a better measure to determine whether the mesh size is going to be fine enough. It's not the only measure, but it's, uh, uh, it's a quite uh, useful measure, me measure. So I've plotted that now here uh, my pressure drop as a function of the y plus. And you see, initially it's 130, you have the large error, you're reducing the mesh size, and then the y plus here at the uh, y plus about 20, the values don't change anymore, and then the mesh is approximately the, the right size for your, for your simulations. So this is how you can make a mesh refinement study, essentially. You start out with a coarse mesh, you pick a variable that is important for your simulations. In our case, it's more the pressure drop, but it can be also a drag coefficient or a velocity profile or something else. So, and then you are refining the mesh, and with each mesh refinement, you are, you're recording the value that you are uh, that you're after, and plotting that uh, in in in, in, uh, in a graph like this. And once the values don't change anymore, then your results are mesh independent. It may not be very accurate might not be 100% accurate, but at least it's, you know that it's not dependent on the mesh anymore, that you have excluded now the mesh as a source of uncertainty or error. And with that, uh, you can now be sure that uh, all following simulations that you are doing at this mesh res resolution are more or less uh, sufficient because uh, you're doing this mesh refinement usually at the beginning of a project, at a, at a benchmark case, and then once you have uh, established uh, the right mesh size, you can then continue and uh, move on with parameter studies on other parameters, or you're changing the turbulence model to see the sensitivity on that. So the mesh size, the, the mesh refinement study is one of the basic uh, building blocks of any uh, CFD uh, simulation or any CFD study.